Hey everyone, Dr. Steve here. Uh, we're gonna go over today a model that allows you to have greater understanding if you're going through a stress or a challenge or a symptom. So stay tuned and here we go. Okay guys, so what we're gonna do first, and you can do more reading of this online for sure, but I wanted to introduce you to a model that's important and that's been really important in our practice and how I work with people. Uh, Virginia Satire was a, a family therapist and she created this satire model of change. Again, you can go and take a peek and, and read about it. Um, it, it involves uh, systems of helping you to, to gain perspective on different scenarios and situations that might be stressful in your life. Um, she deals with uh, organizations, family dynamics, uh, so quite interesting uh, work that she's done. So let me just kind of give you uh, an introduction to uh, an idea that she had uh, that wrote down as a graph that what we use in, in my, at least when I'm working with people, an idea behind people and their symptoms when something arises potentially as a symptom or as some uncomfortable circumstance in life. So she describes it first as called the late status quo. And the late status quo is our life experience just kind of going as per usual. So I'm just going along, going day to day, going to my work, going home, uh, going and have fun, going to work out, whatever, whatever your life kind of uh, entails that you're doing. And it's called the status quo, so life as usual. So the first part here, one, is life as usual. And as life as usual, what happens is something comes in to interrupt it, called a foreign element. Something comes in to up interrupt life as usual. And for this, for this particular case, we'll use a symptom. Let's say uh, your immune system shuts down. Let's say uh, you have pain. Let's say something occurs that interrupts your ordinary flow of life. In that moment that it arises, you're going to instantly what we call resistance. So there's going to be a resistance to it, a not wanting it to be there. As it becomes more intensified, your normal life now stops and goes into chaos. It goes into the unknown. And as it goes into the unknown, it looks very different. Your day-to-day -day looks very different than what your status quo did. So let's say, for example, your immune system crashed. Well, you laying on the couch, um, not going to work, calling in sick to work. Now you're, you're in that mode of chaos where you're in the unknown and life is looking different. Or if you have a symptom of some sort, um, you have to hobble around. Um, it's completely taking your attention. You're in almost a different reality than what your status quo was before. And so now you're in this mode of chaos and the perceived unknown. Now, what she also writes about is in this, what we could call darker state or lower state, or, or a state where life is different, where there's chaos that's ensued, uh, you also have the opportunity to get a transforming idea. Now, it doesn't specify how long you have to stay in this chaos, but I will assure you that you will at some point during this chaos get the transforming idea. That's what the model indicates. You get the transforming idea, and oftentimes that might give you hope or some sort of, maybe someone was referred to me and I have a conversation with them and all of a sudden we start reorganizing and, and setting a plan to reorganize their health or something like that, where there's a transforming idea that enters into the scene and now there's, the energy starts to rise in the system. And as the energy starts to rise, life is starting to at least seemingly return to status quo. At least in our heads it seems that way. Maybe we're going back to work, maybe we're going back to the gym, or something of usual seems to be arising. Now, I think we've, most of us have been in that type of state. I, I, I'm, I have, I, I'm sure you have as well. Um, and then, so now you're starting to get to towards the old status quo. You see, if we draw a line straight, straight across, you're getting towards the status quo. But what you're doing here is you're infusing new ideas, you're learning, you're meeting new people, like something's happening in there where your life is actually changing. And if you have too much of a pull to try to go back to the status quo of what your life used to be, you're going to end up having to recycle through this process again because you didn't get ultimately the gift in what this was really all about. So when we work with people and if they came in with a symptom, 
my one of my main objectives is to eventually have them see the gift in the symptom so that they're not trying to get back to the old version of them but through ever whatever they've learned whatever they've gotten aware of whatever they've experienced actually starts to propel them to a new status quo level which is exceeds and is higher than the previous as a quick example i worked with a woman the other day she had chronic shoulder pain and we went through at this stage, because she was entering the status quo, uh, the status quo stage, we went through and sat down with her and found all the wonderful benefits that that symptom was bringing her. And she found herself wanting to go back to this place a little bit. So I came in with a little bit of a plan to help her identify what were the gifts in some of the shoulder problems that were going on. And we rhymed off about 25 to 30 gifts that she got, how it's benefited her kids, she's changed her lifestyle in her house, her kids are watching her eat better, um, she's, she's met new relationships at this gym that she's at. So there's a whole cool transformation that's been going on. When she realized that, she's able to propel to a higher level of function and she didn't really actually, she said, well, whether this shoulder pain goes or not, it's actually kind of irrelevant based on what I've learned right now. And so that's the whole next level to a new status quo is that you see the gift in step four and then you go to a whole new baseline status quo in step five. So that's essentially what the transformation process looks like, especially if you have a symptom. You go down, it's chaos, but you're looking for that transformational shift that's occurring. You're looking to eventually see what the gift in the problem is, which is in the book, which is why I wrote the book, Finding Magic in the Mess, because at this point is really where you're looking to find magic in the mess. Here's the mess, and you're looking to find magic in it. You're not looking to get back to the old you. You're looking to get the gift and the learning and the awareness from it, and then move to a whole new baseline of function in your everyday life. And this goes on and cycles on very, very often for a lot of people. But again, it's part of that resistance to trying to be the old you that gets people caught up back into this chaotic cycle. So again, if you're, if you're finding yourself repeating in a chaotic cycle, my suggestion would be is go to four, go to step four, which is working at finding what's the gift in that. And again, the book, Finding Magic in the Mess, is you're trying to find the magic in the disorder, in the, the symptom, in the circumstance that seem to create, screw you, seem to screw your life up, essentially. And you're trying to find and working at finding the gift and what you thought screwed your life up. So then you reorganize your thoughts around that and you go to a new level. So that's really about finding magic in the mess. So uh, hopefully that uh, helps, gives you a little idea of what the transformation process looks like. And uh, yeah, give me your feedback. Let me know what you're transforming with and maybe your magic that you're finding in some of the mess that you experience in day-to-day -day life. So thanks and take care.